Welcome back to Answers in First Enoch, episode 26. We're halfway through. It's time to delve into the giants, the offspring of the Watcher fallen angels in their union with human women, according to even Genesis, of course. Uh, they wanted to have children, and they did. You'll see that it had a purpose. Uh, yes, angels can mate with human women when in human form. No, they are not 18 feet tall. We get these kinds of questions, so let's just deal with them, uh, or whatever size at that time. Uh, they are in human form. They can eat and do everything a human can do, and they're human size. Uh, we covered the B'nai Ha Elohim, the Hebrew phrase, uh, very specifically pointing to angels, not men. And otherwise, those stupid scholars have men entering heaven for a council in the days of Job, which is utterly illiterate. And that never happened. But what about these children? Were they really giants? I mean, you know, isn't the Bible figurative? Oh, you mean when it gives an exact measurement? Hmm. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to say an exact measurement is figurative, <laughs> yet they do it because they're stupid scholars. That's why. They don't believe the Bible, and they never likely will. There's no debating them because they live in a different paradigm called the occult, not the Bible. They are steeped into the occult many times, and most Bible scholars are. They know the occult very well. They know the Bible very little. So, uh, basically, when the Bible says these giants, or a pretty good ballpark, uh, you know, of their size uh, and strength, we can actually assess that. And yeah, we'll go through passages, and we'll show you. They were giants, and that's kind of the word used if anyone could actually read Hebrew, but who, who knows? Most scholars seem like they can't especially rabbis who are supposed to understand Hebrew, yet can't understand the word for giants used many times. Da is all I can say. Uh, basically, we give you some examples in this video. We'll cover the narrative in First Enoch. We'll bring in Genesis, which says, well, they were giants, as well as the Book of Jubilees, which says they were giants. Duh. Uh, that's not just English translation, and it is what the Hebrew word means, and it's there multiple times. It's also there in Scripture before and after the flood. Same word. Duh. Uh, yes, giants indeed crossed over the flood, just as Genesis 6-4 tells us they did. If there were another angel incursion, I know there are folks like uh, Rob Skiba, who we loved, absolutely loved the guy. Uh, what a wonderful man uh, he was. But we know that there are those who believe that there was another angel incursion. But see, they're making up scripture. It's not there. And when it's not there, you can't propagate it, period. It would bring the same judgment as the Watchers, especially... Uh, as to basically say, nah, uh, is to accuse Yahuwah of being an unrighteous judge, uh, that he turns a blind eye to the second incursion while the first one he didn't and responded so drastically. That doesn't sound like a righteous judge to me. Uh, it just doesn't work there, Mr. Scholar. Uh, try thinking through the ramifications of your scholarly positions, which are stupid, uh, just a little. Why don't you? Now, just how evil were these children? Unimaginably so, really. And this is why so many underestimate the enemy. After this video, you'll get this. They do not realize just how evil these beings are. Satan and his demonic realm. Every imagination of their heart is evil continually. We get that from Genesis. We get that from Jubilees. And we get that from Enoch. They all agree on that. I don't think the Bible could nail that down any better. Evil incarnate. Always. Period. Let's get started. Let's begin with 1st Enoch. Open your books uh, to chapter 6, verse 1. 
And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Almost the exact language of Genesis 6, uh, 1, so no doubting that. Verse 2, And the angels, the children of the heaven, that's the sons of God, or sons of Elohim, there in Genesis it is the same, uh, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. So the watchers, as we've covered, angels took human women as wives. But why? They wanted children. They wanted children. Understand that. Now, they got their wish, but man, will they regret it. The result of this sin and evil breed is only evil incarnate. The worst evil the world has ever seen. That's why this is so significant. And it's still with us. We're going to cover even the timeline because Enoch tells us when the demons are gone. Ha, wait for that in this video. Skip to chapter 7, verse 2, and they became pregnant, the women uh, who mated with the watchers. And they bear great giants. That's, that's, that's the word. I mean, it's, it just, it's just there. Uh, are, are we sure they were giants? Well, let's test that in this video. We'll go into that quite a bit. But get this, whose height was 3,000 L's. Now, we mentioned this before. How tall is that? Well, some attempt to use a modern European measure called an L uh, that is not this L of Enoch. And that's impertinent, really. No one knows what an L was before the flood. No one. No scholar does. Look it up. Go everywhere. And you will find no actual reference to an actual measurement doesn't exist. Not that we found anywhere, and I'm sure no scholar has either. However, this measure survives in other ways. See, we can determine this, just how tall and how strong were these giants. Were they really giants? Verse 3, who consumed all the acquisitions of men? So whatever they were, they were a lot stronger than men were. See, and when men could no longer sustain them, wait, so they require more sustenance than a man, which means they were bigger at least, right? I mean, even just, just basic language tells you these were giants. The giants, that's the word, turned against them and devoured mankind. Now, man could not gather enough food for them especially. That's a lot of food. But we can get a better measure here. The giants then turned on and devoured mankind, almost all of it. Only Noah and his family truly remained and were purely human. And that's according to Genesis when you really just simply read the passage. Uh, that Noah was a righteous man and pure in his generations. Hmm, what's that? DNA. That's what it's talking about. So... Even Genesis is clear about this. That, that really can't actually be disputed. But when you have these two other books as a second and third witness, oh, wow. Well, why not just censor those and then act like you don't know what Genesis actually says? That's stupid scholarship, indeed. But that wasn't enough because these evil giants wanted destruction of Everything created by Yahuwah and Yahusha. Understand that. They hate the creators. Hate, hate, hate. I mean, they are the absolute opposite. You can't get more opposite than their theology. And yet, we find that same theology today in government policies, in society generally, and even in the church. We've covered some already. We will cover more. Verse 5. And they began to sin against birds. Wow. Now imagine the hybrid creatures that would result. If you look back at what they call dinosaurs, a fraud word from the 1800s, very new classification that never existed prior yet. Uh, really, what we call dinosaurs were all called dragons uh, in history. 
prior, even in the first century, even prior to that, uh, even Alexander the Great, there's a, you know, such a, uh, a historical narrative. So it's there. So birds, uh, maybe the pterodactyl, they call it, perhaps, we don't know for sure. Uh, we don't know if they're even putting these bones together properly. That's one of the questions. Some of these bones uh, actually are spread across uh, a mile or more, like Lucy, the fraudulent uh, supposed missing link. You know, they, they take bones from a mile apart and put them together from multiple caves as if, oh, well, when we die, what happens to our bones? Well, they just spread out right? I mean, isn't that what happens? Isn't that what happens to all of us? Our bones just, they just go, you know, they, you can't stop those bones from moving. They just keep moving, right? Wrong. That is utter stupidity, and that's science today, and it's not actual science. And beasts, so the beasts of the field, and reptiles. Now, this is fascinating. Where do you think we get dinosaurs from? Uh, most are uh, they appear to be reptilian in essence. Uh, of those that are real, again, many, uh, especially any who are meat eaters. That is, I mean, right away we know from before the flood, animals were vegetarians. So that's what the Bible says. There's no mention of them being meat eaters until after the flood and man as well. So that tells you a lot about them uh, and is a good measure, a uh, logical measure. But basically, these so-called dinosaurs, well, they're Nephilim hybrids is what they would be, assuming they're real and, you know, they don't have made in China stamped on the bottom of that particular bone that they're putting in a museum because most museum bones are not actually the bones. Uh, they just manufacture those in plants in China. There's, there's several. Just go to Alibaba and look up dinosaur bones and you'll find that there's several uh, manufacturers of dinosaur bones uh it's not that it's wrong for them to do that uh they're trying to preserve the bones i get that uh but we should all know this and it it seems like most don't and fish now their violation of fish fish uh must not have been as severe uh especially not the ocean varieties uh, because Yahuwah did not need to wipe them out in the flood. So imagine, though, you know, mermaids and the like perhaps were real. We hear the legends today. Uh, in fact, some believe they still exist. But regardless, even if they did and even if they do still exist, they are Nephilim hybrid creations and evil, period. Remember, every imagination of their heart is evil continually got that in other words they can't do good period even if they did good their motive is not understand that and to devour one another's flesh they even killed each other uh turned on each other because well they're pure evil and drink the blood vampires what Notice this is a Nephilim practice rebuked by Scripture many times over. Uh, were they vampires? Were they, you know, Dracula with a cape and he turns into a bat at night? That's Hollywood drama. And, uh, you know, certainly very unlikely. Uh, though they did have special powers prior to the flood. Uh, and you're seeing many of those or examples in Marvel comics and the like. Wouldn't that just be a hybrid creature, really? A vampire that drinks blood? I mean, pretty much Enoch is nailing that down right there. Uh, not that they turn into bats again, but that they drink the blood of others, especially men. Verse 6, Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Wow. The earth did. And that's not the only time that's mentioned. Now, what makes modern church think the earth does not make accusation against it for practicing and teaching lawlessness. It's the same doctrine of the Nephilim, and yet that is standard church doctrine today. Lawlessness is what? Well, according to James, that is the very definition of the word sin. Sin is lawlessness. They're teaching sin. And the earth makes accusation against those that do that understand. I mean, they completely throw out most of the Bible, even New Testament law, and claim, 
we are to be lawless. We have no law. We don't need law. We have liberty. Yeah, that's the ancient goddess that sits in the harbor there in New York City. Yeah, the goddess of liberty. Yeah, she's also the goddess of fertility, free sex, and um, she is a disgusting harlot. Uh, that's what she is. Yet, they put her there in, you know, massive presence, there's no doubt, because that is their god or goddess, one of them. They serve many occult gods and goddesses. So basically, the definition of sin, they literally teach sin. And what happens when they do? The earth makes accusation against them. This is huge. How about the Book of Jubilees? Does it disagree with First Enoch? Nope, it agrees completely. Uh, verse 1 here in chapter 5, And it came to pass, when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth, sounds just like Genesis 6, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of Elohim, yes, they were angels, indisputably. There's nothing to discuss on that. And any scholar that tries to argue it is stupid. They're just not able to read, period. Saw them on a certain year of this jubilee that they were beautiful to look upon, and they took themselves wise, wives of all whom they chose. And they bare unto them sons, and they were little little men right now oh no 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 it says giants again why does it keep saying giants they can't be giants could they i mean that's what scholars say many uh yet again they have no clue what they're talking about yes they were giants we'll support that even further even from the modern old testament you'll see this is the same in both first enoch jubilees and Genesis 6, starting in verse 1 in Genesis uh, 6, 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. We're looking at the same language here. That the sons of God, that's Elohim in Hebrew, uh, and yes, it means the Elohim, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose understand angels don't have children in heaven messiah said that we know that so these are not the product of being an offspring they were created on the first day of creation according to jubilees by yahuwah and yahusha this is the exact same narrative and really there's no separating them there's no other way to read this when you have three witnesses of the same passage Duh, scholars, read, just read. First Enoch and Jubilees are second and third witness to Genesis, and it is incredible how many scholars don't even question why Genesis doesn't seem to have a witness in their modern Pharisee canon of willing ignorance. One would think they would consider this, but again, as Peter warned, they are willingly ignorant of these facts. That's what happens when they censor scripture. They cause other problems. They just sweep those under the carpet, of course. We won't. The thing is, those problems don't even actually exist. They created them in their censorship. If they just restored the Bible canon of the temple priests, who are the only biblical keepers of scripture, even when they found their library in Qumran, what did they do? They immediately began to dismiss and attack and marginalize and explain it away in the most illiterate of positions imaginable, such as, oh, they were Essenes. Oh, you mean uh, a word never mentioned in all of Scripture, a word never mentioned in any of the Dead Sea Scroll writings, and there are tons. Uh, but they actually identify themselves as the son of Zadok. Uh, the sons of Aaron, the sons of Levi, uh, the temple priests that were exiled there by the Pharisees and Hasmoneans. These aren't scholars, folks. They are the dumbest people in history because they can't even read simple sentences. They'll translate them, and then they can't seem to understand the English that they translated. That's pretty bad. It's called willing ignorance. So basically, uh, they are proving themselves to be liars. That's it. And we cannot trust anything they say as a result. This is why we prove all 
things. Hold fast that which is good. There's a lot out there that is not good, but there is truth, and we can find it. Verse 3, And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. Uh, we test that and prove it out, that it is literally the lifespan of mankind, and that proves out to this day. People don't live uh, other than a very choice exception, one woman, and that's it, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of thing in any given time. It really remains true. Uh, there were giants in the earth in those days. Everyone see that? This is Genesis, and it says there are giants in the land, period. And they're not there just in those days. And don't worry, we'll look at the Hebrew word too. We're going to get there in this video. And they were there in those days, but no, not just in those days of the flood. These are the days of the flood. That's when this is written. This is the flood narrative. This begins right here in this chapter. So these are the days up, leading up to and the days of the flood. That's what we're in here. That's the narrative. And also after that. So they are still there after the flood. Pretty simple. And Genesis 6 says that. No, not all of them and almost all will be wiped out in the flood indeed. But this is Genesis saying some will survive the flood. See, that's been there all along. So then for someone to say, but Yahuwah was supposed to wipe them all out. No, that's not what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says, even Genesis. There will not be another angel incursion. Can't happen. If it does, the judgment will follow, and we never see that scripture nor a record of that occurring. No angel is that dumb. When the sons of Elohim came in unto the daughters of men, okay, so again, sons of who? Sons of Elohim. Classification is not men. That pretty much says they're not men. Not sons of men, but we do see daughters of men. So human women angels. That language could not be clearer, and any scholar saying otherwise really tests everything they say because they are willingly ignorant indeed. And they bear children to them. That was their purpose, remember that. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. This is fascinating language. Uh, it doesn't say giants though, right? Well, yeah, it just told you giants. We just read that before. It says giants. And then they go to, uh, you know, this part of the passage, and they say, oh, no, it just says children. See, it doesn't say giants. Yeah, duh. I mean, again, it, when you can't read uh, in context, that's a major, <laughs> major problem uh, for many scholars. They really are so jaded, they have no clue. Uh, so, yes, um, especially uh, Jewish uh, scholars, rabbinic Judaism, does try to actually state, oh no, they, they weren't actually giants, except for the word giants is there, even in Hebrew you'll see, uh, because they can't read. They don't want to. They don't want to believe this. They want to propagate an occult position, which is what they represent. Except it just said there were giants in the land, the result of the offspring of the watchers and human women, who were of old, well, that would be those before the flood. And they are still there after the flood, because we're there in this passage. They are the men of renown. Now, they knew at this time who the men of renown were. Moses knew when he wrote this that he's talking about the Nephilim. That's very clear, especially when you read Jubilees. But even this passage is so abundantly clear. Those before the flood who are still there after the flood. Same ones, and we'll show you the word, same word. They are the men of renown. What's that mean? Well, we know uh, from surviving even Greek myths, but even Babylonian, the Sumerian legends and lore as well, uh, the giant lore is steeped into history. It's all over it uh, in ancient history. Sure, they try to ignore it today, uh, and even when they find giant bones, uh, well, hundreds have been found and documented even in credible newspapers. 
Uh, we could do video after video on that, but you can check out the work of others who have uh, done pretty good research on that, we'll tell you. The bones disappear when the Vatican or the Smithsonian especially get involved. Oops, I don't know what happened to those large bones. It must have disappeared. I guess we just uh, misplaced them. I, maybe it's under this shelf over there. I, maybe it's under my desk. I don't know. Yeah, right. Steve Quayle, uh, L.A. Marzulli, Tom Horn, Rob Skiba, and many others have covered much on this. Take a look at their work. Uh, they've, they've done a pretty good job of documenting that the bones of giants were found, were documented as being found, and um, still are being found for that matter. So there you have it. The Bible is not vague nor silent on this. We'll explore the words interpreted giants next, but even in English, there are giants before the flood, and there are giants mentioned many times after the flood. Period. The end. Nothing to discuss, nothing to debate, folks. They became known as the sons of Anak, or the Anakim. When you add the I-M, you just make it plural, same, same ones. Uh, or what we know from Sumerian lore as the Anunnaki, same ones, yes. That is the Nephilim and Watcher paradigm. That some even try to compare and equate to Scripture, even saying is the origin of Scripture, which is utterly illiterate and fraud. Uh, no thank you. We see multiple tribes, specifically giants like the Imims, uh, maybe Imams, I don't know. Uh, Zemzumins, uh, these are from the giants of old. Uh, that's what Scripture has always said, and that is referring to before the flood. They crossed over somehow because they are there before and after the flood. You know, just as Genesis 6-4 is very clear, that is fact. Og of Bashan is known as hailing from the remnant of the giants. What does that mean? I, the remnant means remaining. He's one of the original remaining giants. Likely he crossed over the flood or is of pure bloodline nevertheless. However, these giants were also among the tribes that Yahuwah told Israel to wipe out. We're not going to go through all of those names, but that is also very fascinating. Uh, that is why, in fact, these giants are an abomination. They should not exist, period. That's why Yahuwah wanted them wiped out. Uh, and this is after the flood, and they're still there, and they still don't belong. He will allow them to even return to power in the last days. Understand that. That is what prophecy says. It is just as he allowed in Egypt, uh, you know, where he allowed Israel to be enslaved, uh, in Assyria and Babylon, where they were allowed to be taken captive. Why? Well, because they broke his covenant. That's why. It, they are uh, receiving the punishment for their sin, for their lawlessness. Ha! Huh. It is also why he continues to allow Satan and his demons to function as well, and even allows them to return uh, you know, all the same. Uh, on the day of judgment, however, this will all be dealt with, and only the righteous will remain. Only Satan and a choice few demons uh, of his princes will remain, uh, Gog and Magog, not Gog of Magog, that's just Gog, uh, but Magog is a separate character uh, and Prince Deban, or perhaps Princess, they say in some lore that she is female and the mother of Gog, perhaps. Anyway, they will remain to once again attempt uh, to, uh, you know, lead and deceive the remnant. But they will fail and then be consumed forever. The Hebrew word, nafil, uh, it's basically used in Genesis 6-4, is the same word used in uh, the Hebrew in Numbers 13 when they saw giants, that's the word, in the land. The word means, well, giants, the Nephilim. This is not difficult, and here you are. Before the flood, they were Nephil, and after the flood, there were Nephil. Same ones, same word, same usage. And by the way, the plural is Nephilim, adding the I-M to the end, 
same word. Some try to say, but they weren't giants. Uh, well, again, incredibly stupid. When the Bible in Hebrew is very clear, they most certainly were. The other word interpreted giants in the references we showed on screen earlier, you especially uh, can see after the flood, is the word Raphaim, which is interpreted giants 17 times. But the word is Raphaim. And then it's just left as Raphaim eight times in Scripture. Both, all 25 times, are the same giants as before the flood. Now, they're a diluted bloodline. Indeed, they get smaller, but they're there nonetheless. In other words, they are the same word. In fact, the scripture we showed you in Deuteronomy 2.11, the Anakim, or sons of Anak, as the Raphaim. And those are the ones that the Israelite spies said they were as grasshoppers in their sight tying the two words together indisputably. Imagine being a grasshopper and looking up at a human. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's the picture there. Uh, whether exaggerated some or not, the picture is very clear. These were huge. They were much larger than the standard human at that time. What does the Hebrew word Raphaim mean? Well, it means giants, a tribe of giants. A giant, um, giant, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say these were maybe giants? Just a guess, of course. Yeah, that's what an idiot blogger would say who can't read a sentence uh, and understand it, of course. Uh, but who cares? But I wish there were some way to know this is the case, right? I mean, uh, are we sure giant means giant? I mean, if only the Bible told us how tall they were and how strong they were, well, maybe the picture would really come into focus then, and no one could really debate it. Oh, they do anyway, because get ready to focus, because it specifically tells you the size and strength of these giants who were giants. Now, this is a good stopping point for this video. In the next video... We're going to go into specifics from Scripture of exactly how tall and how strong these Nephilim giants were, and there's really no debating it. So we keep this ending short and recap at the end of the next. We have over 400 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our podcast is available for most of our videos on uh, basically our website as well as most podcast servers, uh, including uh, Amazon, uh, Spotify, uh, pretty much all the popular ones, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc., etc. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor link below. We now have six books published internationally with more coming, uh, being read in over 100 countries. Our new release, the first book of Enoch, the oldest book in history, uh, which we prove right there in the introduction right away. We also have now launched to a fear Philippines coffee table book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Still available in the Philippines as well, in hardcover. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interior, uh, as so many had requested. We already have the color maps in the Philippines for that, uh, but that is available in hardcover or softcover, uh, and also, of course, in black and white, if you wish. Uh, and the Book of Enoch is available in all three 
uh, formats as well on Amazon. And in the Philippines, it's in black and white. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, now free in ebook. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. Thank you.